Hello everybody, Sterile Prophet here, and today this video is going to give a little update. Uh, where have I been? Why have the uploads stopped? And what is going on with the channel? Um, I am also going to talk about a couple other things uh, once I'm done with the channel update. Uh, just some things that have been going on um, with me. Uh, give the video, you know, just give, give some information, give some talking, you know, talk about some stuff. And uh, just give you guys a video. It's been a little bit. Uh, so... First things first, uh, the the gameplay you are seeing is for a game called Vampire Survivors. It is a, a little indie game that came out on Steam, I think about two months ago. Uh, it's $3, it's like $2.99, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's uh, kind of like a reverse bullet hell game uh, where your character becomes the bullet hell. Uh, that's how it's described on the store page at least, but really it's a uh, uh, 2D roguelike like arena game you're in these open arenas monsters swarm in on you you need to maneuver kill them level up get items and create a character that can overwhelm the onslaught of enemies you uh, eventually uh, end up seeing if you watch the end of this you're going to see how crazy the the enemies can get um but yeah game's pretty neat um when i do these channel updates i want to try to do something that's hor horror adjacent um my last channel update video was dead by daylight and that was, uh, you know, that's a horror-ish game. Uh, you know, it's got sometimes you get jump scared or whatever, but it's it's got it's got the it's it's a horror aesthetic. And this game, it's got skeletons and monsters and stuff. So that that's kind of horror game aesthetic too. This game isn't scary at all, but it's something to watch while I'm talking. And so I went with it because I like playing it. Um, so with that out of the way, and I do recommend the game. I recommend buying it. Um, the developer constantly updates it. Um, I think once it gets to like you know 1.0, which is probably going to be a while, I think it's going to be something really, really neat. It's something really, really neat right now, but I think it's going to be something even more neat uh, once it's uh, all done. So, all right, where have the videos been? Uh, where, where, what has happened to the videos? Where, where have they gone? I mean, uh, not where have they been? That doesn't make any sense. So, I had uploaded a ton of videos in advance. Uh, I recorded, uploaded, scheduled them to, you know, scheduled them to debut um, on the appropriate day. Well, I got so far ahead, and then I got busy with in, you know, in re with real life stuff that I just simply it slipped my mind that I ran out of videos. Um, I came back. I, I went away for a week on a trip, and uh, came back. And just, I, I forgot that I needed to make more videos. So, uh, I had up, I had videos uploaded and set to premiere through the release of Elden Ring, which was on the 25th of February. Um, and I planned that weekend. I planned on that weekend making some more videos, uh, that didn't happen cause I forgot that I needed to make videos. And, um, the last video I did was called strange toilet. And that was uh, just a real quick game. Uh, that way that when I uploaded strange toilet was the day I realized I needed more videos. And so I recorded that one real quick, uploaded it. I think it turned out pretty good. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. You know, strange toilet was a neat little game. Um, so I put the video up and I haven't had a video since. And it's just, I honestly just haven't had really the time. Um, I've been kind of busy with some stuff, uh, and I just, I haven't had time to do videos. And I'm going away, got another trip that I'm going away from, going away for. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. And um, so there's, there isn't going to be any horror gaming videos uh, for a little bit. Um, what I think I want to do, and this video is going to be the first one of those, is uh, I think I might do a couple of like, like vlog style videos. Uh, where I just kind of talk about some stuff, uh, you know, just... Maybe, Something I've seen, something I've read, whatever, heard, game, you know, maybe something I'm playing on my phone or something since I'll be gone. Um, maybe try to do a couple blog videos while I'm gone. And the, the the big plan is to get back to the horror games, to get back to Silent Hill 3 once I'm back. And, and I'll be back at the end of March. So probably in April, the videos will resume. Uh, that's, that's the plan. Anyway, uh, things can always go... Not according to plan, but as of right now, that is the plan. Uh, so, what I want to ask of you guys, my, my whoever watches this, my subscribers, whoever's watching this, uh, 
I want to say that next week and the week after, I will try to set aside some time and do a, a, a vlog video once a week and just talk about what's going on. You know, give me something to do while I'm while I'm away, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm not going away just to record videos, but it'll give me, I'll be able to record videos, you know what I mean. Um, so, uh, in the comments, if you have any questions, if you have a topic or, or something in a, something you want to hear my opinion on or, or something you want me to talk about, uh, share or whatever, uh, put it down in the comments. And I'll, the next video, I'll, I'll answer those questions or if you have a topic, I'll talk about the topic or, or whatever, you know, just, uh, uh, yeah, just let me know down in the comments. And um, so that's, yeah, that's really it for the channel. If you have any more questions about it, I'm not going away. I'm not, I'm not retired. I'm not done. Uh, just life got in the way. So that is in a positive way. I don't want to, I don't want to sit here. It's not like there's some travesty or something going on. It's life just got in the way in a positive, positive way. So uh, with all that being said, that's the end of the channel update. If that's all you care about, I'm pretty much done with that right here. I'm going to go in and talk about a couple other things that I have that I have going on. Or just things I've been enjoying, I guess I should say. Because it's going to pretty much be stuff, content type stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm totally doing this off the, like, just, I, I didn't write a script or any, obviously I didn't write a script, right? But I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, I've tried recording this a few times and this one seems to be working. Like, as far as, I don't know what I like, but, or content-wise, or whatever. Um, so, first thing that I want to talk about is, I am going to talk about Elden Ring. Just for a little bit. Uh, Elden Ring, if you are unaware, is the newest From Software game. From Software is the company that's probably most famous for making uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro... And now Elden Ring, um, they, they, they have made other games besides the Souls games. Uh, Armored Core was a big one. Uh, Kingsfield was really neat. Uh, that first Kingsfield on the PlayStation 1 was a lot of fun. It was real, real, just real neat to play a game like that. Um, and uh, they've done some other games here and there. Uh, 3D Dot Game Heroes came out on the PS3 uh, around the same, around, I think right after Dark Souls it came out, maybe? Yeah, I think it was after Dark Souls 3D Dot Game Heroes came out, and um, but you know, so they've done they've done a few things here and there, but mainly the last you know last several years, it's it's been Souls related, Souls, Sekiro, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, whatever. So Elden Ring came out the end of February. I was super super excited for it. Uh, I, I like all the other FromSoft games. I'm a big fan. Demon Souls, I like a lot. Bloodborne's probably my favorite game by them. Um, Dark Souls is neat. Dark Souls 2 is not neat. Dark Souls 2 is actually trash. Uh, Dark Souls 3 isn't great, but it's not trash like Dark Souls 2. And Sekiro is amazing. Um, so, all excited for Elden Ring. Ready to play it. Got into it. Uh, I bought it on uh, bought it on the PC. Uh, the PC version, at least at release, was a shit show when it came to performance. Uh, frame rate issues. Um enemies would attack you and like the game would pause it was like the game was thinking about what they were going to do and i don't mean like that that feign attack that they do the game would literally pause uh bosses especially bosses i would see like four or five second pauses when they would swing and you can't play a game like that with performance like that so i refunded the pc version i got the plate i got the playstation 5 version it definitely runs a lot better but there's another huge problem and it's that i do not like elden ring um I don't like it. I've spent probably, I don't know, maybe a dozen hours with it. Maybe a little bit more. I, I don't know. It tells you when you quit the game, and it's been a few days since I played it. I think it's 12, maybe 15 hours with it. And the takeaway I have from it is I don't like the game. Uh, almost every design decision, if I was in charge, I would have done differently. Uh, I'm, and I'm not a game designer, uh, but that's I, I just I don't like any of the choices they've made. Uh, the open world is empty and boring, which makes it pointless. Um, you travel from point A to point B, and there's just nothing going on. And it's not—I was expecting towns and tons of NPCs or anything, because that's not what the souls—that's not what that type of game is about. But when you have this big open world, and there's just nothing in it, there, there, 
it's it's boring. It's boring to explore. Um, I just I want. I I don't I don't like that. So and then, I don't like. Um, so yeah. So the open world's boring. It's empty and boring, but it's also too big. It's for being as empty as it is. It is way too large. And they give you the horse, or it's not really a horse, but the mount. They give you the mount to, you know, so you can go faster. But even on the mount, the world feels too big. It feels like there needs to be a, a leveled up mount that goes even faster. Or even better yet, like a teleporting thing that just takes you where you need to go. Because the world is absolutely not fun to explore. Um, combat is Dark Souls 3. It, it's just straight-ass Dark Souls 3 combat. Sure. If you want to give us that after you've given us... So you gave us uh, Bloodborne, and then you gave us Sekiro, that are your two best controlling games. Uh, Sekiro's combat is like S-tier, God-tier combat, right? You know, you're just skill, super skill-based. Once you get great at it, the game is just, you just... The game becomes your bitch once you get good at Sekiro, right? And... To go backwards, to go to clunky Souls-like combat after they've improved their... Bloodborne is an improvement over the Souls games. Everything about Bloodborne is a, is a 100% improvement over the Souls games. Sekiro is, takes a different route, but it is also an improvement over all the other games they've made. And Elden Ring is a huge step back as far as I'm concerned, is with the combat. It's just the slow, chunky, clunky combat of Souls. And that was great before they made it better. And that's the big problem. They made it better. Now it's back to the... the I'm, I'm repeating myself. Um, and then on top of it, you have... What, what they started to do in Dark Souls 3 is you have Dark Souls 3 combat with Bloodborne-like bosses. And that isn't fun at all. Um... Bloodborne Souls Souls games like Dark Souls Demon Souls Dark Souls 1 2 3 people play them fast and they dodge and stuff like that you know and no hit runs everything like that but Dark Souls the Souls games are more defensive games you you know you, you're meant to turtle up with a shield you don't have to like I said you can play how you want but it's kind of you turtle up with a shield you're defensive you look for openings and you you chip away at a boss sometimes right and then you get better at the game and you become a slaughter you know you become a whirling dervish as they say um, of just death and destruction. So they're more passive games. Bloodborne and Sekiro are super, super, like, like you have to be aggressive in both of those games, right? And, like, get, like Sekiro, like, Bloodborne, it's fast-paced, you're meant to get to the boss, you don't, you know, you don't even really, you're not even supposed to use the shield. There's, like, two shields in Bloodborne, they're both fucking garbage, but... You're, you're meant to use your guns and your, and your hunter's weapons, you know, your saw blades and all that, saw cleaver... And get in the bot, get in the enemy's face, and fuck them up. Like that's what Bloodborne's all about. Sekiro's the same way. You know, you're deflecting and parrying and all that stuff, but you're meant to be toe to toe with that enemy, fucking just aggressive. You're not, you know, even Sekiro, like it's got its stupid stealth mechanic, and you don't stealth in Sekiro except the tutorial part where you have to stealth. Who stealths? Like, get up to the enemy, clank some swords, fucking cut his goddamn head off, right? Like that's that's Sekiro. And then to go back to this game where it's all fucking... Oh, but then the bosses match that pace. They match your player pace. And with Dark Souls 3 and now with Elden Ring, they're making these fancy, quick, fast, Bloodborne-like bosses, but put you, but you're putting, but you're up against them with Souls combat. It's not fun. It was a neat idea in Dark Souls 3 when you fought Sister Freed because she was like an homage to Maria from Bloodborne, and not everybody played Bloodborne. And that was neat. Like, one little boss, just kind of a throwback thing. And she was fun to fight. That was a fun fight. But that's because the rest of the fights were, were with Souls bosses. You're playing a Souls game, you fight Souls bosses. Um, and then uh, Sekiro, with the Demon of Hatred, has its Bloodborne boss, right? And so, okay, I get that. You, you know, not everyone, can, not everyone has been able to play Bloodborne. So let's put an inspired boss in every, every game. And that's fine. And that's absolutely fine. But... Elden Ring is either Bloodborne boss or it's a boss that references a boss from another game that we've played before. So in the amount of time I've spent with Elden Ring, I have fought three bosses that are either Sister Freed or Lady Maria or both of them together. There is literally a boss that is 
or more of a, it's an invader. I'm going to spoil a little bit of Elden Ring, I'm sorry, but there's an invader that, it, it's an NPC invader that is literally freed in Maria. It has a scythe in one hand, a sword in the other. It uses cold, ice magic, or fi uh, like ice, or black, black flame magic and blood magic. It's both of them together. On top of two other bosses that were just like Maria or Sister Freed. And that's, if I want to fight them, I'll play those games, right? It's okay, like, the boss that combines the two, the, or, or the invader that combines Maria and Freed, that would have been fine without these other bosses that behave just like bosses from the other game. There's a boss that's the fucking dancer. Like, or it, it's it's to get one of the weapons. It's a weapon boss. It's like a little, it's a thing in one of the, it's like a thing in the field, and you teleport, or you click it, or you, you, you get on it, and you hit the button, and the boss teleports into this arena, and you fight it. And it's the fucking dancer. It behaves exactly like the dancer. And if I want to fight the dancer, I will play Dark Souls 3. I don't want to play a game that's just constantly trying to rem hey, hey, remember our old games, remember our old games. You know, hints and things there, you know, little little little, little Easter eggs and stuff are fine. But this game is blatantly just it's the it's the other games. And they said that. They said so much as this was kind of a um this was kind of gonna be uh like taking bits and pieces from all of their other games. And it does that, but it seems like it takes the worst part of each of those games and puts them in the and puts them into this game. So like Bloodborne, the worst part of Bloodborne is not the bosses, but when you can't control, when you have a character that doesn't control like the hunter, those bosses aren't fun to fight. You need to be on toe, you need to be on pace with those bosses. Fighting, and I say I've been saying it a bunch, a bunch, but it it really is my biggest pet peeve with this game is the bosses. And Souls games have always been known for these big, crazy, awesome boss fights. Um, but this one's just it's reskin bosses. They all remind me of someone else, of another boss that I fought, and that reminds me of Dark Souls Two because Dark Souls Two Two is rotten with bosses that reference old bosses or just reskin bosses, and Dark Souls Two fucking sucks. So. This game, I don't like the open world. I don't like the bosses. Um, I don't like that it's just Dark Souls 3 combat. Um, maybe if it was Souls mixed with Bloodborne or something. Or um, Honestly, after Sekiro, I mean, just hitting right trigger or right the right bumper to swing my sword and just fight like that without being able to deflect and everything like that, it seemed kind of boring. So, like, uh, it, like it, maybe combat should have been more like Sekiro. You know, or, 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 or I don't know, something like that. And, uh, um... So I've um, I, I've played the game for about 15 hours, and I mentioned um, I mentioned uh, the bosses. None of them are fun to fight. I've fought two of the main bosses. Neither of them were fun. None of the side bosses are fun. The invaders aren't fun. The the game's not fun, and it really it really hurts to say that because I I. I was I've been I've been really looking forward to this game. I, I love Souls. I love From Software stuff. I really thought this was going to be like the end all be all. Like like this was going to be the last one of their games that you need right until the next one comes out. But you know, uh, group of ideas from all the other games, just something different, something special. And it's I don't think it is. Um, I don't necessarily think it is a bad game, but I don't like it. Uh, I don't I, I don't like decisions they made like like I said before um, I think it looks nice but then again after the Demon Souls remake Demon Souls remake looks amazing from soft games have never looked amazing they look good uh, and with an open world and everything shit the performance issues on the PC you got to go with something that's a little you know a little graphically fidel you know the, the fidelity graphical fidelity is a little less than something else because of the big open world and you know from soft has the PC versions haven't always been amazing, but, uh, um, but yeah, uh, I don't like Elden Ring. I haven't played it in maybe a week, um, and I don't plan on going back to it. Uh, there isn't anything that, that grabbed me from it. Uh, everything about it just turned me away and made me actively not want to play it. Um, so that's what I'm doing, is not playing it. Uh, that's something that I learned, that, that I had to really learn. When you don't like a game, stop playing it. Don't keep playing it don't uh and, and not just and that's not just true for games that's true for game movie book whatever you're doing if you're doing something and you actively do not like what you're doing just stop you don't have to you don't have to finish it you don't get a you don't get a fucking badge of honor 
you know, like, hey, oh, man, I hated Elden Ring, or I don't like Elden Ring, and I finished it. You wasted your... I, that's a waste of my time. I can go play something I like. I can go do something that I like and, and avoid it. So, I do not recommend Elden Ring. Uh, I know I am in the minority when it comes to that. So many people are just crazy, crazy over... You know, they're over the moon about it. Um, I think this is going to be one of those games. Give it six months, give it a year, and then you're going to start seeing the backlash. And it's going to end up like something like a GTA 4, where tens, 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 you know, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, amazing game, perfect game. And then, like I said, six months or a year later, then it's going to be like, no, this game probably is really a six. This game's going to be a five, maybe a seven. Um, and it's not going to be remembered as fondly. Uh, that, that's, my, that's my guess, but I don't know. Uh, uh, historically, though, I also... I do have a history of not liking something, and I go back to it later on, and I end up appreciating it. Uh, so that could happen, but I have to want to play it again, and as of this moment, I do not want to play it again. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, so we're going to move on. And I talked about that way more than I wanted to. I apologize. But I am going to talk about... Uh, I went to the movies. I went to the movies a couple weeks ago, and I saw... The Batman. Uh... I enjoyed the Batman. Um, I thought it was a good Batman movie. I think it is the best Batman movie that has come out. Um, I have not liked any of the other Batman movies, uh, except, well, let me take that back. I like the, the, the 89 one with Michael Keaton. Um, I liked, I like, I liked Ben Affleck as Batman. But Batman vs Superman was not great, but he was a good Batman. Um, and I didn't like any of the Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale Batmans. They're all trash. Um, and I don't like the other old school Batman movie. I, I don't like them. I, I'm, for the most part, I don't like the Batman movies. Uh, the new one with Robert Pattinson is, I think, it's the best Batman, the, the best live action Batman movie. Um, I think he's the best live action Batman. Um, I just, I really liked it. Uh, I liked the tone of it. I liked that it was grounded. Um, it was almost like a, like a, um, almost like a horror detective story. Like it was almost, it was shot kind of like a horror movie, but it had like that, that serious dry tone of like a hard boiled detective story would have. I really liked that. Um, it takes place a couple years. So Bruce Wayne's been Batman for a couple years. And so he's still getting into it, getting his footing. And um, they, Pattison played that really well. Uh, the, the, the not wanting to be Bruce Wayne, the wanting to spend his time as Batman all the time and not being able to balance the two, like, like just on this quest for vengeance and, and hasn't learned to, to balance, the, the work-life balance, if you will. And um, uh, that, that came across just great, like really, really well done. Um, I... I liked Paul Dano as the Riddler. Uh, Paul Dano is always great at playing creepy, weird dudes, and this was a creepy, weird dude, and I I, I liked that version of the Riddler. Um, when I first saw the picture of the costume, I didn't think that was going to be, like, I was like, what the hell's that? But it ends up um, it ends up kind of working, uh, but but he was a great Riddler. Uh, probably, uh, well, honestly, the best Riddler, because there hasn't been a lot of Riddlers, and I think the only, I think... The only other Riddler was Jim Carrey, and that fucking sucked. Uh, but yeah, good Riddler. Um, and then the movie, the length. The movie is three hours long. It's two hours and 56 minutes. And it, when I was watching it, it didn't feel like it was two hours and 56 minutes. But it doesn't need it doesn't need to be that long. There, there are things they could have cut out. There are scenes they could have cut out, trimmed down. Probably got about two and a half, maybe, maybe 240, and it would have been fine. But... Two, three hours just seems it's 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 excessive, but the movie doesn't feel that long. So so it's like I'm kind of on both sides with that. Um, but uh, so yeah, so uh, I liked it. Uh, oh, um, uh, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman was great. Uh, per perfect casting choice. Um, they didn't play. They didn't have Catwoman. Wasn't stupid. Um, you know even the. the, the I don't even know if they called her Catwoman. I don't remember, but like she'd wear, you know, like the leather suit and, you know, like a like a 
like a knit cap and it was like the, the sew line, you know, like the seam that's in the top of a knit cap had the little points on it, you know, to make it kind of look like maybe cat ears, but it wasn't like a cat mask. And I, I really liked her like real down, the, like real grounded cat woman. She wasn't saying, you know, meow or, you know, or, you know, at putting meow on the end of words or no, 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 no cartoony bullshit. And, uh, but, uh, she was really good as Catwoman, and I think she's probably the best Catwoman. Uh, so that was really neat, and, uh, or she was neat. Um, oh, and, um, what's his name? Colin Farrell was the Penguin, uh, and all that makeup. I, I, if I hadn't known it was him, I wouldn't know it was Colin Farrell, but he played the Penguin really good. I, I like, I liked his, I like, I, I like the movie. I like all, I like the versions of the characters in that movie. I like them. I think they're great. I think they're probably the best live action version of those characters. So whoever's in this movie, it's the best live action version of them. Except for the thing at the end that I'm not going to spoil, but it was kind of dumb, and it kind of it kinda, it's probably the one dumb thing in the whole movie was uh, Riddler's in Riddler at the end. Riddler's talking to someone else, and it implies that it's maybe another character that shouldn't have been in the movie. They could have cut that out. Um, I won't I won't say who it is. Uh, I won't say what it is or who it is or anything. But uh, I do recommend the Batman. Um, if you like comic book movies, I recommend the Batman. Um, I think it's a real shame that DC has this. They, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm oh, DC's okay. I'm, I'm more. I, I like Batman. Um, the rest of DC, I can take it or leave it. But I like me, like a lot of people. I like Batman. It's he's one of my favorites. And um, they're they can't. DC's too busy trying to chase Marvel. They, you know, Marvel spent years, decades building up to an Avengers and all that stuff, and DC put out two movies in Justice League. Like, no, they're, they're just they're, they're, they want they, they want the big deal stuff without building up the big deal, and that's the one thing that Marvel got right. I don't like the Marvel movies at all, but that's the one thing they got right was the build up to their events. And um, DC, they they go too fast, and it's a real shame that like this version of Batman won't be is not in, like, the DC Extended Universe or anything like that, because this should be their Batman. Robert Pattinson should be their Batman. You know, Henry Cavill should be Superman. Like, he's the perfect person to play Superman. He's just been in bad movies. You know, and then these... They're getting these great casting choices, but they're putting them in dog shit movies, except for the Batman. But the Batman, or... And Joker. I like I liked Joaquin Phoenix Joker a lot. That's, that's I'm not one of those guys, but I like that movie. He was amazing in that. And that would be really cool, to see Robert Pattinson's Batman go against Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. That would be legit. And that's what the type of shit that DC should be trying to go to. Not having, like... Not trying to make their happy-go-lucky comic book movies... Marvel does that shit with all their jokes and their stupid references and, and, and making their shit for, for a broad audience, which I get for the money, but, you know, but DC should go that opposite route and make these dark, gritty fucking movies. And I don't mean Zack Snyder dark, like, but dark, like Joker, like the Batman, like serious, grounded stuff. That's what they should be doing. And, because those movies have been the good ones. And that's what they should do. So, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Batman and everything. Recommend Batman. If you haven't seen Joker, I recommend The Joker. It's a good movie. All the fandom around it is total fucking bullshit, but the movie's a good... It's a good movie. Um, another comic book movie, if you want to see it, like, serious comic book movie, if you want to watch it, it's Logan. The last uh, last movie with Hugh Jackman is Wolverine in it. That's a great movie. Not just a great comic book movie. That's a great movie. Dark, serious... You know, the tone's great, It's the acting's great, it's a great movie. That's a great, great movie. You should go watch Logan. Um, so, the next thing, and this is probably going to be the last thing because I'm running out of time. I'm actually probably going to go the whole length of this uh, Vampire Survivors video. Maybe a little under. But um, music. I want to talk about music real quick. I don't talk about music a whole lot on the channel. I don't think I've mentioned anything about likes or dislikes or anything. And um, what I... Uh, what I am talking about is I want to pull up the I want to pull up it up so I get the name right. All right, so I heard about a band called Vein uh, about a week ago. So I went to go check them out, and their newest record it just came out in March or it came out March like a couple weeks ago. Probably why I heard about them. Uh, sorry, 
uh, This World is Going to Ruin You. I have probably listened to this album 30 times over the last week. It is just unbelievably amazing. If you like... Uh, they're, they're a hardcore band, like like a hardcore punk band. Um, you know, and, uh, uh, yeah, hardcore, you know, uh, floor punching and windmilling, straight edge, hardcore. I, I don't know if they're those... I don't, know, I don't know if they're straight edge, but like that type of hardcore is what I mean. Um, they're a hardcore band, like, through and through. But man, they are amazing. Like, I absolutely love this record. Um, I, my musical tastes generally are, uh, my gen my music tastes are generally metal focused. Uh, you know, death metal, grindcore, you know, I like some black metal, um, whatever. Like, generally I lean towards metal. Uh, I do like some hardcore. Um, I also like, uh, like, you know, rock and roll, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, Clutch, uh, I like Modest Mouse a lot. Uh, I've always been a big Tori Amos fan. I like Sarah McLaughlin, Alanis Morissette. Uh, I, I got in the, really into K-pop the last couple of years. I like rap. Like, I like, 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 like hardcore gangster rap, uh, you know, um, all, all kinds of stuff. I like, I like a whole bunch of music. And, uh, but the, 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 the reason that this record is, I, I like it so much, and this record is actually really important to me, it's becoming very important to me, is I haven't been this into, like, a new metal, really, not new metal, I don't mean, like, Slipknot or Korn, I mean, like, a new, like, a, like, a, like, a, like, a new, like, a brand new metal release, or hardcore, I'm just gonna say metal is just the general term, but, like, I haven't been into a record like this this much in a very long time, uh, it just, it grabs me, it's, it's just, it's great. It's so good. And I would play a little bit of it, but YouTube doesn't like that, so I'm not going to. Um, but it's, it's just, it's ferocious. It's what, like, when you think about, like, a hardcore band, like, it's just that, that crazy fucking aggressive, like, their shows have to be fucking insane. Like, their live shows have to be absolutely off the hook, because every song is just full of energy you know, it's got, they got their mosh parts, they got the parts where I'm sure the crowd screams along and all that stuff, and it's just, there's a passion to it, and there's a fury to their sound, and it's just, it's fantastic. It's so good. Um, I will say, so, um, it's got, it's got 12 songs on it, every song's a fucking banger, like, every song is a legit banger, um, but, uh, Lights Out, Magazine Beach, Orgy in the Morgue and Wavery are those are probably my favorite songs off the record. Um, the breakdown that happens about halfway through Waverly is one of the most insane breakdowns I've ever heard in any in any song. It's just like Waverly starts out with like this, uh, it's like uh, you know, mellower sound, clean vocals and all that stuff. And it goes for about half the song, and then just gets in the middle and just. Drug, 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 like just the fucking breakdown starts and it's just in, in the rest of the songs like a fucking breakdown and it's crazy just so it's, it's like just super powerful so if you like metal at all um uh, yeah vein.fm from this no sorry vein.fm this world is going to ruin you I'm sorry I'm bad with titles and stuff uh, this world is going to ruin you we're in March of 2022, and I'm pretty sure I'm looking at my album of the year. Um, it's amazing. I recommend it 100%. 100% recommend it. Go listen to it. Listen to it 30 times like I have. Once I'm done recording this, I'm probably going to go listen to it again. It's just it's amazing. Um, so... With all that being said, it's getting close to the end. I think the I think my Vampire Survivors video is about 40 minutes. This talking is about to be 40 minutes long, so I'm gonna get start wrapping up. And I want to say, uh, I want to say as always, uh, oh, I, I'm I, I'm since my last update video, I'm at 61 subscribers. I've gotten 11 more subscribers since I did my 50 sub update video. So uh, thank you so much, everyone who has subscribed to the channel, everyone who watches my videos, comments, likes, and all that stuff. I I appreciate it so much. I appreciate it more than you probably realize. Um, doing the YouTube channel 
it's, it's been a lot of fun, and it, it helped me through some uh, some some down times uh, in in my life, and some uh, some uh, I'm gonna say dark times, but I don't mean like that. I don't mean like dark dark or anything, but like just some dark times. The, the YouTube channels helped me help drag me out of that, and so everyone who watches, everyone who, who I I appreciate it is so much. It makes me feel so happy that you guys like what I put out. Uh, some of these videos can be super silly and uh, I, I, I make some super silly choices on games and stuff and it's just, it, it, it really makes me feel good that you guys like the content I put out. So thank, thank you for that. Um, if you, I'm going to say, and so I'm going to say again, I said close to the beginning of the video, uh, next couple weeks, I'm not going to be around. Uh, I'm going to be out of town. Um, if you want, I, I'm going to, try to shoot a couple more vlog videos. It'll just be me talking in front of a... It'll be me talking to my phone. I'm going to try to record some more of those videos. Uh, a couple more of the videos while I'm, while I'm traveling. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any topics, any, any comments, anything that you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments below this video, and I will do that in the, in, in the vlogs that I plan on doing. Um, horror videos will be coming back to the channel the... Probably first week in April, hopefully. Uh, get back. I, I, I'll be back home the end of March, and hopefully I will be able to knock some videos out for that following week. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, it'll start Wednesday will be something. Silent Hill will pick up again that Saturday, uh, whatever that date is. And um, we'll rock it through the end of Silent Hill and move on to our next long-form horror game. Um... If you do like horror, if you if somehow you found this video and and you you, you haven't seen my channel before, uh, generally I upload horror content, uh, horror video game content. If you like watching somebody play scary games and being scared by those scary games, go check out my channel. Watch my other videos. Um, Wrong Floor is a good one to start with. Uh, uh, Death Flush or Three Headed Santa are probably another couple of good ones to watch if you haven't seen my videos, or if you haven't seen those videos, go watch those. They're some of my best ones. Um, but yeah, check out the channel if you like horror stuff. Uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I know this isn't my normal thing, but if you like this, I do the I do these every now and then just random. I'm going to do the random talking things every now and then too, I think. I've, I've, as I'm recording it right now, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm probably going to do more of this. So topics, questions, comments, things you want me to talk about down in the, the, down in the comments. Put those down there for me so I can have it for the next video. Um... Once again, this has been Sarah Prophet. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you. I think you still have some more vampire survivors left, I think. It might be a couple more minutes left. So watch the rest of this to see if I won. And I will see you in the next video. Late. <laughs>